This is what the temperature anomaly map looked like on May 31st, and this is what it could look like by June 7th. You might be puzzled to see all that blue showing up, especially considering the fact that most of Europe has experienced above normal temperatures for weeks now, and along with that, June 1st also marked the start of meteorological summer, which raises even more questions about these incoming lower temperatures. I'll be walking you through the timing and impacts brought on by this interesting pattern change, so let's get straight into it. Contrary to what we saw towards the end of May, one trend you're going to notice over the course of the week is the southward suppression of the main severe weather threats, and this is a direct result of this late season cold wave. I'll get back to that later in this video. The root of the problem will be this very large area of low pressure developing in the Norwegian Sea, and since Sunday night it has intensified and organized itself quite quickly, dropping down into the 970 millibar range by this morning. It's quite clear that once that strong counterclockwise flow takes shape, we see abnormally low temperatures get pulled straight out of Greenland and pushed into Scandinavia by this afternoon behind a wee cold front. Unfortunately, if that was the only cold front coming from this system, I probably wouldn't be making this video, so let's see what else this storm has in store. As early as Tuesday, the parent low pressure area is actually going to start weakening, but that won't stop a much stronger cold front from materializing right over Ireland and the UK. Throughout the day, it's going to gain momentum, impacting Scandinavia by the evening and night. Behind this front, a noticeably cooler air mass will set in, cold enough even for some snow to fall in portions of the higher elevations in Norway and Scotland. As we continue playing this forward through the rest of the week, it looks like this large complex of low pressure won't be in any rush, so I wouldn't be surprised if this cooler weather stuck around even into the weekend. Iceland, Scandinavia, Ireland, and the UK will clearly be impacted the most by this series of cold fronts during the June 3rd and 10th time frame, so well below average temperatures can be expected. Additionally, areas as far south as Poland, Germany, France, and Belarus could see a period of cooler than average weather in this time frame, while pretty much everyone else should stay above average. The five-day snowfall forecast really puts into perspective just the amount of snow we could see, especially in Iceland, which could be over 100 centimeters of accumulation where you see orange. The higher train of Scotland should get some wintry weather as well, with 1 to 5 centimeters in the forecast where you see light blue. The Scandinavian mountains should also get some waves of snowfall, and I do expect the heaviest accumulation in southern Norway and some of the higher peaks. For the overall precipitation trend in the same time frame as the temperature outlook, the extended period of low pressure has prompted me to shade most of the Nordic countries into western Russia in green, indicating above normal precipitation. Parts of the Iberian Peninsula should see some wetter weather due to a cutoff low, which could spark rounds of heavy storms in some locations. Other than that, a lot of places which experienced relentless storms and even flooding last month are now included in this tan shade, which represents drier than average conditions. The overall decrease in widespread thunderstorms is one of the biggest reasons why we see much of Europe included in that tan shade, and like I mentioned in the beginning, this is a direct result of that colder air sweeping in with this new storm. Even still, one of the most intense severe weather outbreaks so far this year is setting up across portions of the central Balkans today, Monday, June 3rd, and this has prompted a somewhat rare level 3 risk from Estofex. This will be an all hazards event, which means damaging wind, large hail, and tornadoes are all in the realm of possibility, but the biggest and most widespread threat is going to be large to very large hail. You can see all of this scattered shower and thunderstorm activity still extending as far north as Finland and Sweden today, and then already by June 5th it looks quite different, as the main thunderstorm risk gets suppressed further south and east. With that being said, areas across southern Europe should continue watching out for the possibility of severe weather, but if you live further north, it looks like we're going to see a period of calm. Anyways, let's conclude this forecast with photo of the day, and today we have one sent in from Estonia. This is a really nicely captured image of a distant thunderstorm in the southeastern portion of the country in late May, so I'd like to thank Damien for sending that through Discord. Consider becoming part of this rapidly growing community of weather watchers by clicking the subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss a forecast. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.